So, on this, <laughs> you're probably asking why I'm eating and filming. <laughs> because real Black Clover fans eat every goddamn week thanks to Tabata. What? I ain't feeling nothing because I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing because I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing because I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing because I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing because I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing because I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing because I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing because I'm numbed out. Pull up, Bounce. pull up, say what's the deal, bruh? See, I will lose my cool any second if they don't hear us. Many people would fear us. And when you look in the mirror, don't you compare us to anything that get embarrassed. Ha, ha, woo. So many people be talking like they want the problems or something. I know that all of you polish and all of you people get punished. It's hard to keep food on your stomach to all of the hustle keep running. That's hard to stay humble with nothing. We're off of the juggle, we're bugging. So let me come down all of a sudden. I told you that we keep it buzzing. Ha! Woo! I ain't feeling nothing cause I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing cause I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing cause I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing cause I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing cause I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing cause I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing cause I'm numbed out. Bounce. I ain't feeling nothing cause I'm numbed out. What is up everyone? It is Jack Oats the Goat. You either know or you don't. So this video is going to start off with my just honest take on what I thought of chapter 255 of Black Clover. Um, and then I'm going to get into a little bit of predictions slash theories. And then we're going to get into the million dollar question that was requested by John Tate. Uh, I'll put his Twitter right there maybe. Yeah, there. Or there. I'll put it there. I think it'll look better right there. So John Tate, follow him on Twitter. He's really cool. Um, but he, I, I did ask on Twitter, like if there's anything you guys wanted me to go over specifically. Um, and he was actually curious on my take. Um, well, I'm not even gonna say the question yet, but just know that the question that I answer is because of him. So we'll get into it later. But uh, to get into my honest take about chapter 255, if I were to rate it on a scale of 10, I would probably say this chapter was probably a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10, comfortable. Um, not perfect, but like goddamn near perfect. Um, I really, really liked uh, just how the stakes were just like, they were blown, they were blown up. Like, no, no, no bars intended. Like, it really blew out of proportion. I did not think like, oh shit. Like, yeah, if Monica's leaving, she's gonna definitely, you know, just make all of those disciples self-destruct. That's some crazy, crazy shit I was not expecting. Um, but let's start in order. Like, uh, Vinicula versus Noel has been just a massively entertaining match. Um, especially just in the way of, like, Noel has not always been um, on people's radars as far as, like, oh, uh, this is, like... Uh, like if we were if we were going to pit like two mages against each other and just like what if battles, Noel's usually not really in that realm of like, you know, oh I'm going to pick Noel versus like I don't know like a Foy goalie or something like, she's not really been there. But I think after this chapter we have no choice but to put her in those conversations almost every time we have them. Um, going up against a seventy percent Vonica, and then going toe to toe with, um, you know, the half seas Vanicula is what I call her. Um, that that's a huge feat to accomplish. Now, am I saying that she equals up to exactly 70% of Vonica? No, not at all. Um, Vonica was definitely just messing around with her, but um, Noelle did what she came to do, and she did more than what she came to do. Um, when the plan failed, she didn't lose hope, where we saw Laura Pachita lose hope um, and totally just give up. And, you know, and given she's not a fighter, she's never claimed to be a fighter, she's more of a supplemental type, uh, but Noelle was not letting this go, um, as she should, and that's, like, she is representing the Black Bulls, and she represented them so well, and even more so, the Clover Kingdom and the Silva family. Like, she represented everything so well, and I don't think we could have asked anything more out of that girl. Um, 
and, and the whole fight has just been so, 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 so nice uh, visually. Um, from uh, Vonica, you know, going, uh, tapping into more of her demonic power, into being split between Majicula and Vonica, and her blood magic, uh, like the Red Beast, is fucking insane to me. I love that. Um, her, her mermaid attire was amazing. Um, I love that she put back her, uh, her Valkyrie armor, even though it was kind of like torn, because she's, you know, she's expended a lot of mana fighting Monica. So, um, you know, seeing her go back to that and still have, you know, that grit about her to just, you know, to keep going uh, was so awesome. And then looking at, even though I thought it was really stupid, just like semantically, um, seeing her stab Vonica and then do the Sea Dragon's War point blank was pretty cool to look at. And um, I think in the long run is going to be like a one-shot move. Like Sea Dragon's War is already just that spell that one-shots almost anybody. But like the Valkyrie armor plus a point blank. Oh my god. This girl's on another level right now. But uh, that, that's what I, I... I loved Vonica and Noel just going back and forth. It's been amazing. Um, the next thing I wanted to go over was Mimosa. Now, uh, when the spoilers came out, not a lot of people peeped it. But... Um, when when we see Vonica, you know, it, we see Falling World, you know, um, and then we see the Tongue Disciple, uh, his magic going wild, and you see uh, Mimosa, like, holding him down. Um, she's been fighting this dude since they started fighting Vonica, and uh, it started off with Undine and Laura Pachika, like, aiding her, you know, and one-shotting the dude. But now Undine's been out, Laura Pachika's out. This is Mimosa on her own, and she is so far is untouched. And I, I don't really want to say it like, you know, oh, like the disciple hasn't been able to close in. Uh, their, their fight is more of like a, um, a fight of attrition, you know? Like it's who's going to last longer. And um, Mimosa has been going toe to toe, and I've got to say, that's wildly impressive um, in and of itself, even though, like, we can't give her, you know, actual feats off of this just because, like I said, it's a battle for attrition and it's not your regular battle. Um, but she, for on her own, holding off one of those disciples is pretty insane compared to the mimosa that we know. Um, yeah, it's wild. It's wild. Um, and then the next thing, the disciples exploding. I, like I said in the beginning, I did not expect that to happen. Um, and I... I like, Spot is so good at it. I mean, he kind of foreshadows, like, Vonica's not really interested in any of these disciples. Like, they worship her, and that's as far as that relationship goes. Because um, as soon as she walked in with the tongue dude, um, she she killed him. She was like, dude, stop fucking talking to me. Like, <laughs> like I'm here trying to kill people. I, you're being creepy. Like, fuck off. Um, and I... I, I just loved when she's dipping out, the dude goes like, oh, can you wait up a sec? Like, I'm about to kill this girl. And she's like, just stop talking to me. <laughs> like, you're, you're just going to die anyway, you know? You're, ugh. I, and it really shows Vonica's, like, she is, like, terror incarnate. Like, she, um, it's, it's this feel of just, like, she, it's, a, it's a light switch for her. Um, and it's a real psychopathy where she's she takes killing as just like a fun game for her. But like when people really piss her off, that, that switch goes off and it's just like this darkness and, and that's it. Um, and it was just nuts seeing the, um, the disciples just start expanding and then seeing the scale of all of these explosions. Like I... We're gonna get into it later, but man, I, I really, yeah, we're gonna get into it later. Those, those explosions are enormous. Like, comparing it to something I would probably say like close to like a mountain. Like, these things are no joke at all. Um, and I'm, yeah, we'll get into it, we'll get into it. Then the last thing in this chapter was Yami versus Dante. Now, we didn't get a whole lot of fighting. Um, as soon as we get in, we get Yami, you know, slicing Dante yet again. 
Um, and then Dante's going like, you know what? Kind of like you. You know what? I'll, I'll do you a favor. I'll show you the true power of someone who's possessed by a devil. And then Yami goes, you know, well, I guess I'll show you the power of a, a regular old human, um, which is ironic because uh, if you if you tuned in to like any of my past videos, you know that I know or that you know that I feel like, excuse me, that I feel like Yami's not human. Actually, he, he might be part human, um, but I don't think he is fully human. Uh, so I thought it was just kind of ironic of him to say that. Um, but uh, that fight, I just want to say, at no point does it even reflect that Yami is trying his hardest. Um, and I, I, someone brought up a good point. I think it was Dashon Hancho or someone else um, said Yami's not actually serious until that cigarette falls out of his mouth. And that's true. I, and honestly, we haven't seen Yami go all out at all, like during the season. We've never seen the dude struggle. So it's kind of it's kind of weird for anyone to say like, yeah, he's definitely trying his hardest when we've never even seen that. And from what we've seen, actually, like we haven't even seen uh, the the scale of power that he brought to bring down Zagrid. Like that power hasn't been shown at all. So this is really just a fight, like. Yami is pacing himself is what it looks like and he even says when he comes into the battlefield like when he saves uh, Himself and Finral from getting completely crushed by uh, gravity He says I learned a lot over the six months um, Let's give it a test drive, you know, and he, he's just test driving right now um, But at no point does it even signify that he's going close to all out um, So I just wanted to put that out there um, but that's been my honest take. Like I said, it's been a 9 out of 10. I really like the pacing of these chapters. Um, and to be completely, completely honest, I'm almost fight out, fighted out, or whatever, um, battled out, or whatever. It's been so many fights from chapter, oh, fuck, like 230 to current. And now I just want them to, to like, to, to stop, regroup, come up with a plan, Let's delve into some backstories, find some characters that we need, like the Witch Queen drew out from the very beginning. Um, we're going to see him and we need him right now. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, the third eye, we, we need all of these characters. And uh, and I'm, I'm ready to get into all of that stuff. We need the, the Agrippas too, we need them right now. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with what we've been getting so far. Like I said in the beginning, we, we really eat every damn week, and that's thanks to Vada, dude. Um, but let's hop into the theories part of this. Um, this is where I'm just going to start wilding out on you guys, so hope you enjoy it. So one thing that a few people noticed right off the bat was that Vinicula was in fact damaged by Noelle's last attack. Um, she she said something like, um, like oh, I told you it wouldn't work, and then she, it kind of she had to stop because she spit up blood. And it was like, um, <laughs> excuse me, Noelle's not arcane. She's got water. What's going on? What is going on? Now, I'm I'm super curious as to why it happened. I don't have like a full on answer for it. Um, we, we know that the lands, like none of her spells so far are arcane. We know she herself is not arcane and she also does not have a spell that is arcane itself. So why would Vinicula get damaged the way she did? Um, and I'm wondering if it has to do with just like her being a part of like this Valkyrie lineage. Um, Valkyries and lore were very important to, to battle and um, it just everything that happened in the lore, Valkyries had an integral part in it. So I wonder if it's just the fact that she is part of this Valkyrie lineage um, because then we also see Von Vonica mention like she fought Ossier and that was a particularly fun fight for her. Uh, so, like, why would it be fun? Because Ossier, uh, we see, is close to like Nozelle's magic and he's not arcane either, though. So, why would it be fun? I don't know. I really don't know what to make of that. Um, it's been. 
I, like I've been rocking my head over like what what could be, and I really really don't know. Um, and I'm sure there's something in the chapters, previous chapters that Tabata already alluded to, and I'm pretty sure it's the Valkyrie armor. But you know why that would make her ar arcane or. Maybe there's just a separate type of, like, you have arcane mages and then you have, you know, other people like, you know, uh, Valkyries and, you know, Norns, like, that are able to, to do this for whatever reason. Um, yeah, that, that's really tough. It's really tough. But I just did want to point out that Vanicula was, in fact, damaged by that last attack from Noel. The next thing I wanted to point out that... No one else except for me, as far as I saw, at least. I, I, don't, I don't see a whole lot on Twitter, to be honest. Um, but uh, Noelle in the Panicle, the Panicle, jeez, man. Uh, what was I supposed to say? Panicle, Panicle, anyway. Uh, in the panel where she's yelling Vonica's name, and Vonica is, you know, taken off with Lord Pachika, um, she her sweat is going up. Now, this is something, like, not a lot of people take into consideration. Like, I feel like I'm the only person who's ever mentioned sweating upwards in the series of Black Clover and how it's important to note, to note this. We see when people sweat up in, in the series, is, it's indicative to um, a large concentration of mana being in the direct vicinity. Uh, uh, but more likely, it's what happens when a, mon a monopoly. Bro, I'm fucking up these words today. Um, drop a dislike for every mispronounced word I do. Um, so, uh, what was I even saying? Oh, God, I got to get together, guys. So we really only see people sweat up when a monozone has been established. We see this um, when Yami establishes his monozone and everyone in it is sweating up um and i i want to say like noelle has established a monozone uh right now that is only affecting her but then again vonica is not sweating so i don't know if vonica is within that as well um but i also want to point out before anyone was like oh it's duh like the concentrated mana is the demons exploding and all that. like okay i get that and I did consider it, and I looked at the panels, and the mages, like Mimosa, um, uh, Leo, th these guys aren't sweating upwards. They're still sweating downwards. And the, the disciples themselves are also sweating downwards. Now, you would think if that was the cause, them being the epicenter of all that would mean that their sweat would go up as well, but they're not. So this tells me that Noel is not done fighting yet. And we see that she's getting like a new spell. Um, and it could have something to do with that. Uh, what that's going to be, I don't know, but it looks like it involves Monazo. Okay. Um, and I know, I, I know people were kind of shooting back and forth like, oh, she's going to make like, you know, sea dragon layers like around all of the explosions so that no one dies which I really hope doesn't happen. I need death in this series so that like the stakes are, are firm because that's what this series needs for sure. Um, but uh, you know, it's not masterful if it does happen though. Uh, in the very beginning, we were made aware that she's holding up a whole barrier around the town with the help of Undine, of course. But um, I mean, it, it wouldn't be an asshole. Uh, just how she's going to pull that off, not being in the direct area. That's something I would like to see, um, you know, if it does come to fruition. But I, I, again, I don't think that's what's going to happen. Um, I feel like it might be gearing up for like another attack. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? There's something that I, I didn't notice until I read, uh, I reread the chapter today. Uh, when I watched when I read um, Yami versus Dante, and Yami slices Dante open again, I'm realizing that this is the only time an arcane mage has actually landed a blow on um, on a, one of the members of the triad or any of the disciples, really. Um, you know, and I'm not counting 
the the scratch that Asta gave Dante, um, you know, because that was pretty insignificant. But the blows that Yami is landing are very, very deep, uh, and these are not just like, you know, just like oh, superficial wounds that Asta gave him. These are these would usually put you know another uh, opponent out for the count, really. Um, but Dante is healing them with what we can only assume is flesh magic uh, right now. And it got me thinking that there is a really, really big give and take relationship in uh, the, the relationship with the devil and the host, um, amongst the triad at least. So in the beginning of this arc, we were made aware of arcane mages and why the, uh, arcane mages are special. And it's the very fact that they are the ones that can take down the devil, like we saw Yami and Asta to do with Zagreb, right? What makes this more interesting is that these hosts not only have demonic powers, but they're potentially not affected as harshly as just an outright demon would be by arcane mage attacks, just because of the fact that the host is human. And I mean, are they better off having a human host rather than just being out in the open with their own bodies? I, I, I don't know. I think I can leave that up to interpretation. But I mean, I, I think we can also assume that Lucifer is just massively stronger um, with his own body and, you know, probably Grimoire. Um, but, you know, then again, like Zagrid, he was strong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Zagrid was not strong. Um, but I, I will say that Zagreb wasn't like crazy strong. Um, like at the time, he was like otherworldly strong. Uh, right now, I think if we were to replicate this with, you know, like the crew that we have, it wouldn't be such an uphill battle um, fighting him. And like halfway through that fight, Licht and Lumiere weren't really even involved, they were more so protecting everybody else. Um, in the lower realms of the Shadow Palace. So it was really only Asta and Yuno, and they were at their limits already, and they were still going. Um, and then Yami with the clutch kill. Um, I, and of course, Sekri involved in that too. I, I'm hard pressed to say that these demons are just like massively strong. Now, uh, if I want to consider, uh, Lucifer is supposed to be the head of these demons, right? Um, you know, he's probably, he, he probably, of course, would be stronger with his own body, but how much stronger is up in the air. Um, and with the percentages, I really don't know if that is actually like, because, okay, let's consider, Vonica goes, what, 70%, and half her body is split between herself and Majicula. So, is it wrong of me to assume that 100% means that her entire body is would be just consumed by Majicula, and Majicula is kind of resurrected, but kind of not. Um, I, that's something I really don't know. Um, but if that is the case, then they're, yes, again, they're super strong, but it's less impossible to like beat them, especially if they have their own bodies and they're around this strong that we see. Um, if any of Yami's attacks were connecting to an actual devil, they're gonna have a hard time healing that shit, and that's that's a fact. Um, you know, every every hit that he's landed was cloaked with dark magic, which is arcane. So I don't know, who knows, who knows? But I thought it was interesting just this relationship that's happening that makes arcane mages kind of it kind of closes that gap of like, you know, unless you like kill, kill, obliterate me, like it's not gonna do anything. And of course. That could just be Dante, um, specifically since his magic seems to primarily be, you know, uh, healing via flesh magic, right? So I don't know. I just thought I'd throw it out there just to like kind of give, because this is the third type of possession that we've seen in this uh, in this series, and all of them are very special. Um, and and yeah, I don't I don't know where it's going to take us, but that's something I noticed. Uh, now to jump into the million dollar question that our buddy John Tate. Um, asked, he asked, do I think Noel will get Undine? And I think it's a very valid question. And I think um, 
Uh, his more specific question is, would she temporarily get Undine? And um, I'm going to start off with my, my, what I want from this series before I get into like what I actually think is going to happen. Um, what I want from this series is for Noel not to get Undine. That's, that's what I want. I, I don't want her to get Undine at all. Uh, she doesn't need it. Noelle's, Noelle's so just massively strong. And I think it would just kill the story, you know, if she got Undine. I don't, maybe not kill it, but I'd just, I'd definitely be like her rumping in the corner somewhere. Um, I, I really like it when, when characters are self-made, you know, and not, you know, it, it comes from, it comes from being a Naruto fan. It's like every time I get into a debate, oh, Naruto would be nothing without Piranha. Sasuke would be nothing without the shark. I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, I'm like, that's what I want writers to avoid. Just like for my sake, so when I have to discuss the series, when it's completed, uh, I can go like, well, no, Noel didn't have to rely on shit. Like, you know, that, that's something I personally want to avoid. And that's, you know, if I were a writer, I'd want to avoid that from happening to my characters. Um, now, what do I think is actually going to happen? I think someone put it out there. Um, I, I, for, I, I, I lost the, the actual tweet or else I, I put their at on this. But um, someone, someone there, um, they, they posted that they think that they will get Undine, uh, Noel will get Undine temporarily. Um, and I think that would be the best route to take if she does, in fact, get Undine. Um, and I, I can see that happening just because it seems that Undine is able to willingly choose her host. It doesn't really have much to do with like mana and all that stuff. Probably does like at some level, but we already know from, you know, the beginning of this arc and, and somewhat a little later that um, the water spirit is passed down and you can't, you know, if it works, like they're choosing people with like the most mana and like worthiness and all that bullshit. Um, then it, it wouldn't really be that much in their control. It's more of a contract, is what they made it sound like. So, with Lord Pachika being out for the count, and knowing Lord Pachika is not a fighter, Undine could probably give herself to Noel until they're able to get Lord Pachika back. And the, the fact of the matter is, Undine would be massively better with Noel because she is a fighter. What Noel is able to accomplish right now on her own is already amazing. And imagining she, her having the spirit on top of that would blow her way out of proportion. I, like, I, I can't even imagine what she would be like with that. Um, but then, the, then we have to ask, like, will that curse carry over? Um, you know, and that's a reality you have to face, right? So even if she does get Undine, it's probably just for Undine's sake. Like, she needs to be attached to someone strong right now. Um, and Laura Pachik is not there, and actually Laura Pachik should be dying like fucking yesterday uh, with that curse uh, that she has. Um, I, I don't really get what's going on there. Still, something really fishy about that, you guys. Um, but I, I will, I will say I've been mostly. It looks like I've been wrong about Laura Pachik. So um, I, I, it still doesn't add up. It still doesn't add up because she should be dead anyway, unless. You know, uh, Vinicula is just going to take off the curse so that she can play with Noel later, maybe, or extend the curse or something. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I had as far as the chapter. This chapter has been amazing. Noel, if you are Noel Stan, you guys are eating so much right now. I, you know, I'm not a Stan. I, I love every character almost equally. Yami is the one I stand for sure. But um. But yeah, these chapters are getting wilder and wilder and wilder. Um, hopefully that new spell that she's getting is just like an attack spell. Um, and then secondary, I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing like a Sea Dragon's Lair saving everyone. I, I would hope that didn't happen, but still, we'll see. We'll see. But you guys let me know what you thought of this chapter in the comment section below. Make sure you like, dislike, subscribe, unsubscribe. Uh, leave comments, leave hate comments, uh, follow me on Twitter, or find me on Twitter and just tell me how stupid I am, uh, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video.
This is then jack oats to go. You either know or you don't.